when my husband left, there was so much I had to figure out. So much I had to explain to our children. It reminded me of when my dad left when I was five years old. I was lonely and all by myself once again. I guess I will forever be lonely and live to figure out life by myself. I guess the enemy has won. Jesus has destroyed the works of the devil. The dark picture the enemy tried to paint is a lie. God has promised that I will never be lonely again. Hi, I'm Gregory Dickow, and I want to welcome you to The Power to Change today. I think every one of us knows what it's like to feel lonely, depressed, and even afraid at times. The pressures against our emotions can be overwhelming sometimes. Who hasn't felt the waves of darkness try to take over their soul? I think we've all felt that at times, and the devil wants to get us into a place of darkness and keep us there to get us to lose hope or quit. The truth is, though, that Jesus has destroyed the works of the devil, but we lose sight of that at times. We don't know how to live that out. So what the enemy tries to do is paint a hopeless, dark picture of your life so you become discouraged, lonely, and even depressed. You may be in a place like that right now, or perhaps someone you care about is in that place right now. So how do we break free from that place of darkness and depression? Well, that's exactly what today's program is all about. Today, I'm going to walk you step by step out of the darkness and into the light. I believe you'll never be the same again. So watch this and get ready to break free today. We need to stop worrying like this world worries. We don't have to worry about our needs being met the way the world worries about their needs being met. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Amen. People are worried about their needs being met and they're worried about <clears throat> being popular, having attention. I've been thinking a lot about this that, you know, you heard me say the other day maybe that what we want to, what we, what we want to um, experience in our life is, and what we want to hear from God is well done, not well known. Amen. This world is lusting after popularity like never before because there's so many ways that you can accidentally become popular. You take a good picture on Instagram or you have a funny video, funny 30 second video that you can put on YouTube or whatever other vehicle you can put that on these days and man all of a sudden a million people can discover you you sing a song on a tv show and you could get a record and you could make millions of dollars uh, there, there's lots of more ways today than there ever has been to become popular but god doesn't want us when it's all said and done i don't want to hear from the lord you were well known I want to hear from the Lord, well done. I want, that's what I want to hear from him, well done. Now, of course, I want to hear about how much he loves me, but he already tells me that. When I get to heaven, I don't necessarily need to hear that. I want to hear well done. My good and faithful servant. This world is striving for people to love them, for people to care about them, and if we're going to be the light of the world, we can't be trying to get people to like us. We need to become Christ-like and let him continue to change us and continue to conform us to his image and continue to let the Christian life unfold by us reading our Bibles, meditating on God's word, renewing our minds, and we're being transformed and conform to his image day by day and let the world see the Jesus in you. You were created to be popular, but not to be popular because of you, but to be popular because of what God is doing in you. The, you, were, you there is something inside of us that craves for attention. And that's not a bad thing unless 
you direct it towards yourself. What we want to do is, is that craving for attention needs to cause us to be able to point people to Jesus Christ. So with your gift or with your talent or with your skill, you should become popular with it so that you can say, all for the glory of God. I did it for the glory of God. I have it because of the glory of God. And everything you do in life is for the glory of God. If you want to, if, if, if you want to find joy and peace in life, do what you do for the glory of God. Discover your gifts and your talents and use them for God's glory and every opportunity you have to tell your story of what Jesus has done for you, tell it. Amen. All right? Amen. Now, <clears throat> now in Psalm 143, we'll continue. As if we're going to be the light of the world, we have to understand the devil wants to darken our lives by us worrying. The devil wants to darken our lives by us seeking popularity for ourselves, for our own satisfaction and gratification. And the devil wants to darken our lives through depression and loneliness. And I want to just point you to this passage. When David is going through this in Psalm 145, he says, excuse me, Psalm 143, he says, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplication. He says, in your faithfulness answer me and in your righteousness. Now notice what he says. I want to jump down to verse 3 because he says, for the enemy has persecuted my, my what? For the enemy has persecuted my what? My soul. The enemy is after your soul. The enemy wants to crush your inner man. He wants to crush your sense of self-worth. He wants to crush your sense of well-being. He wants to crush your sense of confidence. He wants to crush inside of you that sense of peace and joy. And it, notice what it says. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me dwell in darkness like those who have long been dead. And David goes on to say, in, and he says, um, therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is distressed. The Amplified says, Therefore, my spirit is overwhelmed and faints within me. Wrapped in gloom, my heart within my bosom grows numb. Now, <clears throat> this is the picture of the condition of what I believe the Christian soul looks like in today's world. It's not supposed to look like this, but this is what it looks like. Overwhelmed. Wrapped in gloom, <laughs> feeling numb, full of darkness. What does he say in verse 3? Feeling your soul is being crushed and you're feeling like those who have long been dead. And this is where the devil wants to bring each and every one of us to. A place where we feel overwhelmed. A place where we feel dark a place where we feel hopeless and faint, a place where we'll give up. And I want to show you how to, how to turn this around. Look at what he says in verse 5. Now it starts to turn. I remember the days of old. I remember all of your doings. I meditate on what you've done and I think about the work of your hands. If we're going to break out of loneliness and depression and the darkness that tries to cover our soul, because everyone goes through this, whether we want to admit it or not, whether we keep up a positive attitude or not, this is the battle that is, wage, that, that is raging against us that the devil is trying to Bring, bring you down through darkness, through feeling overwhelmed, feeling pressured, feeling like a failure, feeling like giving up. And he said, but I remember the first step out of darkness and out of this, this, this spirit of loneliness and depression 
is you got to remember what God has already done. You got to go back and read about what God has already done. The Bible will bring you joy every time you read it. If you, if you go to the stories of what God has done for David and for Abraham and for all the other people in Scripture, joy will come to you. Go read and see what God has already done and look back in your own life, for that matter. Look back in your own life and see what God has done. I mean, think about all the times God has delivered you and God has rescued you and God has saved you. Think about all the people that God has, the good people that God has brought into your life and the bad people that God has rescued you from. I mean, I, when I think about all, that, all the problems that I've had in my life, and yet I see every one of them, how God has delivered me from every one of them, one way or another, whether that problem was a person, whether that problem was, a, was something in my own life, whether that problem was a, an addiction in my life, whether that problem was, was a wrong way of thinking, God has delivered me each and every time, and he will deliver you. And sometimes we just have to stop and remember all the good, because we're constantly thinking about all the bad sometimes, and we need to stop and remember all the good that God has done. Amen. We need to look, and if you, can't, if you can't think of anything in your life, go, go through the scriptures and look at what God has done for David, look at what God has done for, for Ruth, look at what God has done for Esther, look at what God has done for Paul and, and Silas, and look at all that God has done for them, and then remember that whatever God did for them, he'll do for you. He said, I remember the days of old. And then verse 6, he said, I stretch out my hands to you. So the second step out of loneliness, darkness, depression, whatever you want to call it, is worship. We, he says, I spread out my hands to you. I stretch out my hands to you. This is an act of worship. This is, this is there's something happens when you get in an environment like this and you begin to sp spread out your hands to God, when you begin to lift your hands and lift your voice, there's something about worship. That's why the world will be drawn in these last days. They'll be drawn, they'll be drawn by signs and wonders, but they'll be drawn by the Spirit of God in worship. And that's why we need to be a worshiping people, a people that just don't come into church and wait for the music to end, to hear the word, but a people that come on time, a people that show up when the music starts, a people that say, man, when the worship is going at Life Changes Church, I got to be there because I want to spread out my hands to the Lord. And David, man, he, he said, I was persecuted. My spirit was overwhelmed. My mind was defeated. I felt like fainting. I felt like giving up. But I remembered, number one, he said, I remember what God has done. And number two, I spread out my hands in worship to the Lord. And then he says, my soul longs for you like a thirsty land. And he said in verse 7, Here, he said, answer me speedily, O Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, lest I be like those who go into the pit. Cause, now watch what he says in verse 8. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. Okay, so here's the third secret to breaking out of this darkness and this oppression and this feeling overwhelmed and feeling like giving up. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. We need to start our day with the love of God. We need to start our day meditating on God's love. We need to greet each day with the love of God, the loving kindness of the Lord. He says in the morning for a reason, because how you start your day sets the tone for the entire day. If you get up in the morning and you feel discouraged and you start complaining and getting all negative, that sets the tone and sets the course of your day. But we need to set the course of our day on the loving kindness of God and be so consumed with that love and so filled up with that love and so aware of that love and be like, oh God, thank you today that you love me. There's another great verse you can look up later, Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22. It says, your steadfast love, or one translation says it, your loving kindness and your mercy, they are new every morning. Every morning they are new. His loving kindness and his mercy is new. Every morning. I wake up every day and I remember. And this is what my, when my, my good days come when I remember the loving kindness of God is new every morning. My bad days happen when I forget. 
It's really that simple. It's, it just, it's, not, it's not rocket science. It's really simple. When you reflect upon the loving kindness of God, even a bad day will become a good one. A good day is not determined by the good things that happen in your life. A good day is determined by what God can do. If you can trust him and trust his love and his loving kindness in your life, what God can do even on the bad days, how God can turn those bad days into something good. Amen. That's love to me. Loving kindness of God. The love of God is that he will turn the curse into a blessing. He will turn what Joseph's brothers meant against him for evil, God turns it into something good. you got to wake up every day and expect his loving kindness in the morning and know that, man, today, somehow, no matter what happens around me, God is going to turn it into something good. Amen. He says, cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in you I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Now here is the secret also. He says, cause me to know your way, the way in which I should walk. So we have to ask God for wisdom. I believe that the, one of the greatest prayers that you can pray every day is to ask God for wisdom. James chapter 1 verse 5 says, he says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men generously and it will be given to him. Ask for wisdom every day. Because we need it. Have you noticed you need it every day? Have you noticed every day there's a choice to make? You're not sure about something. You're not sure about a certain situation or a person. Every day we need to be asking God for wisdom. Lord, how should I walk? Where, which way should I go? I lift my soul up to you, he says in verse 8. Then he says, deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. I flee unto you. I take shelter in you. And verse 10, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. And quicken me, O Lord. Or he says, revive me for your name's sake, for your righteousness sake. Bring my soul out of trouble. And of your mercy, cut off my enemies and destroy all of them that afflict my soul, for I am your servant. Man, this is the prayer of deliverance out of ever feeling overwhelmed, ever feeling discouraged, ever feeling depressed, ever feeling lonely. You pray this, you wake up and do this, and you know, when I say do it, it's not about rules or regulations, but I'm saying wake up and meditate on the loving kindness of God. Wake up and remember what God has done. Go to bed tonight and remember and start listing for yourself or writing them down all that God has brought you out of. He's been so good to you. He's been so good to me. We have so much to be thankful for. We're not, I mean, and, and that's why God, God didn't make us, God didn't put us in a free nation. He didn't bring you to a free land or have you born in a free land so that you could just have the blessing for yourself, but so that you would be a prayer warrior for others that are suffering, that you would be, recognize that you're blessed so you can be a blessing. And you're free so you can pray for other people's freedom. Amen. And you've been delivered from something so you can help somebody else be delivered from it. There's a reason why you're in this nation. There's a reason why you're in this church. There's a reason why you're here today. It's because there are people that are hurting more than you are. And as you make a habit of looking to God and trusting him and calling on his love and his kindness and his favor and his mercy and his wisdom, that you will then be a, you will then be a blessing to others and you will be able to see the real purpose for which you were born is not just to make it through your life, but it's to help other people make it through theirs too. Amen. And for, to help other people know the Lord and to walk with him. We are not only asking God that he would show us the way, but that he would make us the way for others. 
Where's that verse? Um, is it, what is it? Proverbs 10, 17. I'll just read this to you. And, um, and we'll close with this thought. This is a good, this is a great verse that we've been standing on recently. Proverbs 10, 17. And from the Amplified, he who heeds instruction and correction is not only himself in the way of life, but also is a way of life for others. Whoa. Let me read it to you again. He who heeds instruction and correction is not only himself in the way of life, but also is a way of life for others. And he who neglects or refuses reproof not only himself goes astray, but also causes to err and is a path toward ruin for others. We can either be a path of blessing and breakthrough for others or a path of ruin for others. That's a choice that we're going to make. You wake up with Psalm 143 and the things I just shared with you, you're going to become a path for other people and for their success and for their victory. And you, your life is going to be better than it's ever been when you're helping others make their lives better than theirs have ever been. Amen. When my husband left, there was so much I had to figure out, so much I had to explain to our children. It reminded me of when my dad left when I was five years old. I was lonely and all by myself once again. I guess I will forever be lonely and left to figure out life by myself. I guess the enemy has won. Jesus has destroyed the works of the devil. The dark picture the enemy tried to paint is a lie. God has promised that I will never be lonely again. In today's offer, Pastor Gregory Dickow will send you today's message, Never Lonely Again, in its entirety, to remind you of the truth that God has promised to never leave you lonely. For your love gift of only $25, you will also receive the book and bestseller, Taking Charge of Your Emotions. God wants you to gain control over your emotional life and experience freedom from negative emotions. When you call now, you will also receive the four-disc CD series, Help, Lord! Learn how to walk in dominion over the past and find the answers that you need today. In today's lost society, people are desiring to never be lonely. They're searching for real answers. Many of them have accepted the lie that God has forgotten about them. When you support this ministry, you empower us to take the truth to the homeless, the hungry, and the lost all around the world. Never Lonely Again, our bestseller, the book, Taking Charge of Your Emotions, and the audio series, Help Lord, all yours for your generous love gift of only $25. Feed your heart with God's Word from this material and empower us to help those who need it most. Don't hesitate. Call now. Well, when darkness tries to sweep over your soul, get ready because God's Word is going to sweep it away. And as you heard on today's program, the devil wants to get us into a place of darkness and keep us there so we'll lose hope and quit. He tries to paint this hopeless, dark picture of our life so we become discouraged, lonely, and depressed. Well, I'm here to declare that you are coming out of that place of darkness. And I declare Proverbs 4.18 over you that says, The path of the righteous is like the light of dawn. It gets brighter and brighter until the full day. Now, I believe today and every day is going to get brighter and brighter for you because of the word that you've heard. But there's so much more I want to share with you to help you continue on this path of victory and hope. Psalm 119 verse 130 says that the entrance of God's word brings light. So let me help flood your heart and soul with the light of God's word. Now remember, there are seven simple steps that I've identified to bring you out of loneliness, depression, and fear. And I want to share each of them with you in their entirety. They're part of today's offer. My announcer is going to tell you more. Watch this and I'll be right back to pray for you. Never Lonely Again, our bestseller, the book, Taking Charge of Your Emotions, and the audio series, Help Lord, all yours for your generous love gift of only $25. Feed your heart with God's word from this material and empower us to help those who need it most. Don't hesitate, call now.
Well, let's pray together right now. Heavenly Father, I thank you that the darkness, the fear, the anxiety, the depression that has tried to sweep over our lives, it stops now and the word of God sweeps it out. Lord, give every person watching today hope that things can change, hope that their turnaround begins today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to thank you so much for watching today's program on the power to change today and partnering with me in this ministry. Your help is allowing us to reach people around the world with the message of God's hope, his love and his goodness. Now, don't miss our next broadcast. I love you and I can't wait to see you then. God bless. Well, as we approach the end of 2014, I want to encourage you that you are going to finish strong. And here at our ministry, we're doing our very best to finish our year strong as well. We've taken the gospel of God's grace and his power to the four corners of this earth. And it's only possible through the efforts of our dedicated team and the faithfulness of our ministry partners and friends. Would you consider sowing a generous end of the year gift to enable us to finish strong in 2014? Your tax deductible gift of any amount will help us reach the hurting and the hungry with the good news of Jesus Christ. Any amount the Lord lays on your heart will help us continue this media outreach around the nation and around the world. Thank you so much for your help today. God bless. It's time to receive the power you need in life to win. Join Gregory Dickow for the power to change today. Connect to the power of God with each and every program as Pastor Dickow shares biblical insight and revelation to shift your thinking and change your world. Tap into the power. Tap into the anointing. Tap into the Word on The Power to Change Today with Gregory Dickow. Each week right here on this station.